Four BYU football players named Mel Kuyper's early big board ahead of the 2023 NFL Draft. How does that impact this team going into 2022 this fall? We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about two more members of our Top 50 Player Countdown, one of which from the Independent Era was a do-everything gadget player, while the other was a member of one of the greatest teams in BYU football history in the 1990s. We got all that and more ahead on today's edition of Locked on Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. But more importantly, thank you for making us your first listen here on Locked On Cougars. Very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. And the goal here is simply put to make you the smartest BYU fan in the room by giving you all the news that you guys need to know about on a daily basis thank you so much for joining us let's talk some BYU football and some NFL draft and that's what we're going to start with today is that four current Cougars have been named to Mel Kuyper's early big board ahead of the 2023 NFL draft yes the NFL draft in 2023 is not until next April nearly a year from now but there is no time like the present if you're a guy like Mel Kuyper to discuss what's going on with the BYU football program. So let's start off with, of course, the man who is running this offense, and that is uh, Jaron Hall. He ranks at number six in the top 10 of his position group rankings from Mel Kuyper on ESPN. You have to be a member of ESPN Plus. It's exclusive content. But Jaron Hall is number six on this list. He's behind such luminaries as Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Tyler Van Dyke, Anthony Richardson, and Will Levis, Levi's uh, Levis, I'm assuming, from Kentucky, but then at number six right there is Jaron Hall, followed closely by another guy that BYU once upon a time chased very heavily, Tanner McKee from Stanford. I'm not surprised that Jaron Hall is on this list. As I have said previously on this podcast, and any of you who might be checking this out for the first time, I have talked with enough NFL talent evaluators who have told me that Jaron Hall is looking like at least a mid-round draft pick if everything goes according to plan this upcoming season. I do not expect Jaron Hall to lead BYU into the Big 12. I fully expect that he will play his final season in a Cougar uniform this fall and then embark on his professional uh, quest to play professional football and to have him number six on this list that indicates to me if if the quarterback class is as good in 2023 as some say it might be because i look at bryce young cj stroud and tyler van dyke as at minimum first round quarterbacks if not top 10 picks that means that if you're number six on this list in jaron hall what does that make you a second maybe third round draft pick it makes you a very very highly sought after prospect and i am of the opinion if jaron hall has the type of season that he believes he's capable of having i think a lot of people out there believe he's capable of having he could find himself in the conversation for first round status to imagine BYU in what would be that would be three separate three drafts separating two first round draft picks, one of which, of course, Zach Wilson went number two overall. If Jaron Hall were to sneak into the first round, can you imagine the absolute hype machine that'd be revolving around BYU with Aaron Roderick and the rest of the BYU coaching staff and their ability to evaluate and and coach up talented quarterbacks and make them top NFL draft prospects? Pretty impressive stuff, and I'm not surprised at all that Jaron Hall is on this list. I'm also not very surprised that he's at kind of in the middle of the list. Other guys on this list behind him, as I mentioned, were Tanner McKee, Devin Leary, Phil Dracovic from Boston College, and Hendon Hooker from Tennessee. This is a very good list to be on if you're Jaron Hall, and it's kind of the similar spot to where Zach Wilson started out. And the funny thing is actually the hype for Jaron Hall is starting a lot earlier than Zach Wilson. I remember Zach Wilson starting to pop on to guys like Mel Kuyper's list beginning in kind of, it was the October uh, period of that 2020 season. And suddenly everything was just going haywire. And it was like, who is this kid? What do we need to know about him? And it was just a deep dive on Zach Wilson. And obviously ends up as the number two overall pick. Just an incredible, incredible story. So I guess actually I'm I'm lying on when I say that. Jaron Hall's getting more hype earlier on than Zach Wilson did. And that's actually a very good sign if you're Jaron Hall. There's also the flip side. 
passes. There'll be very, a lot of NFL looking very closely at tape this fall for Jaron Hall, trying to dissect it, trying to find his weaknesses, trying to essentially uh, talk themselves out of taking him in many ways. So it's up to Jaron Hall to go out there and prove to these guys, this is why you need to take me. Number two on this list, move over to the tight ends for a moment here. And at number 10 on the tight ends list is Isaac Rex. Obviously, Rex is a prototypical tight end, six foot six, 250 pounds, more than capable of putting his hand in the dirt, but also being able to split out and play that quote unquote Y or H uh, tight end role. Uh, some call it an F tight end. What I love about Isaac Rex is he's got the ability to impact the game at every level as a tight end. The biggest question mark for him, and I'm actually surprised he's on this list, is how will he respond coming back from that ankle injury suffered in that USC game? If he comes back and is close to what he was before this, there's no reason to think that he can't actually make a move up this list. Uh, Cameron Law, too, the former Olympus High School prospect, the former BYU commit who's playing at Alabama now, he's number six on this list. Dalton Kincaid, one of Utah's standout tight ends, he's number three on this this list. Michael Mayer, a guy that BYU will see this season, the standout tight end for Notre Dame. He is number one on the list. So there's some big time talent at the tight end position, but I'm of the opinion if Isaac Rex goes out and has a stellar, what would that be? A redshirt sophomore? I don't even know anymore with COVID years. I, I you know what? I think it'd be his third year. Speaking of Isaac Rex playing for BYU, whether that's a sophomore or a junior season, very much he could find himself declaring for the NFL draft after this upcoming year, if all goes according to plan. Everything I've heard about him, it's not been in terms of very detailed stuff, but what I have been told is that Jaron, not Jaron Hall, Isaac Rex is progressing very nicely back from multiple surgeries on that ankle. Yes, he had more than one surgery on that ankle, but for all intents and purposes, it appears that he is progressing well. We saw him wandering around at spring ball, seemed like he was moving a little gingerly at times on that ankle, but He's got a whole summer to get himself ready. And if he has the type of season that he's capable of having, if he's fully healthy, not surprising that he would be on this list at number 10 on the tight end position. Now we'll talk about the other two guys. They're both on the offensive side of the football here in just a moment. Explain why two offensive linemen for BYU are very highly thought of, including one that is, wow. This, that's first-round territory for him to be on the list where he is at. We'll get to that here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. Huge fan of Built Bars. I, I, I'm not any... I'm not saying anything that I haven't said before on this podcast. I am a huge fan. I don't know what they did recently, but they've actually kind of changed the formula, I guess is what it would be. Uh, the regular Built Bars, they're actually even better than they ever have been before. I want you guys to give these a shot. If you have not tried them already, you are missing out on the best tasting protein bars for my money. I'm That's what I think is the best protein bar on the market. Your Opinions may vary, but I promise you, you need to give Built Bars a chance. The best part is they're a local company based here in Utah. And many of you know that they have a name, image, and likeness agreement with all BYU football players, giving them some extra cash. And in the case of walk-ons for the BYU football program, paying their tuition for the school year. It's an absolutely incredible gesture from the Built branded companies. You can support BYU football by supporting our friends at Built Bar. A really simple way to do it. Go to Built.com, place your order there. They've got a million different flavors it feels like. You'll be able to find one, two, or I feel like 10 that'll fit your flavor profile. File. They got the built puffs, which are protein infused marshmallow. You have the built bars themselves, which are just packed full of protein, and the macros on them are absolutely incredible. And also, I think they still have some of them left. They have the built granola bars. Give them a shot. Built.com, place your order now. While you're there, use the promo code LOCKED15. That's L O C K E D 1 5 for 15% off your entire order. Promo code LOCKED15 for your 15% off your order. Get and join the best tasting protein bars and support BYU football by supporting our friends at Built Bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. We've got an important favor to ask of you guys out there in Cougar Nation. We have put together a across the entire Locked On Podcast Network so we can learn more about the listeners like you and make your favorite lock podcast like Locked On Cougars even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On Podcast. If you guys don't like the ads, you don't like the way that it's structured, this is your chance to sound off on this. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now. That's LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey to get started. It will not take very long, and everyone that completes a survey qualifies for a chance to win one of 10 100 Ticketmaster gift cards. You can use that to buy some tickets to watch BYU football play this fall. So take advantage of that now to help our audience, uh, to take that audience survey, excuse me, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now. That's LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thank you so much for your help in advance. All right, time to talk about the other two members on this draft board from Mel Kuyper. 
Checking in at number six on the offensive guards list is Clark Barrington from BYU. Clark has been a four-year starter, who will be a four-year starter for BYU in 2022. A guy who came in and absolutely just floored coaches coming off of his mission. Uh, actually came in, uh, served his mission in Uganda of all places. When he showed up at BYU coming off his mission, he weighed somewhere in the 220 to 230 pound range. By the following fall, he's back up to 300 pounds and he's never looked back since. He's been an absolute stalwart at the left guard position for BYU. An NFL team will be lucky to have a guy like Clark Barrington playing for them. What I love about Clark is he is just nasty at the point of attack. He loves nothing more than mixing it up. He The quote, on, the quote of uh, a guy who likes to fight in a phone book, that's what Clark Barrington is. And as an offensive guard at the NFL level, you have to be able to win one-on-one. -on -one. You've got about a three-foot by three-foot square that you have to win, play in and play out. And that's what Clark Barrington relishes doing. He's given up exactly one sack as a BYU Cougar. At least that was the one sack last year. And I believe I don't believe he's offered uh, given up very, very many more than that, if it if any more in his BYU career. Clark is an incredible human being, a guy who's going to absolutely wow NFL personnel with his personality. He is married to a fellow BYU athlete, uh, Brooke, who is a former BYU softball player. She actually just recently graduated. Uh, Clark does have another year of eligibility, if I'm not mistaken, if he were to take it this year. But I think Clark is ready to chase his fortunes. And checking at number six here on this list of guards, that means he's probably going to find himself as a mid-round draft pick at the very worst if he holds the position he's at. And if he has another good year this year, there's no reason to think that he can't move up. The only thing working against a guy like Clark is his age. Similar to Jaron Hall, he served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He'll be closer to, what, 24 or 25 by the time he enters the NFL draft cycle. But there is still plenty of money to be made if you're Clark Barrington. And if you're a mid-round draft pick, you're making a healthy living. You're expected to be on the 53-man or 54-man roster at the NFL level. That's a great spot for Clark Barrington to be checking in at. Uh, Braden Daniels from Utah is just a couple spots ahead of him at number four. Andrew Voorhees, a guy that BYU saw last year playing for USC. He's number three on this list, and I thought BYU handled him fine on defense. So I think that this is a good spot if you're going to be Clark Barrington and hoping that he can go out there and wow uh, NFL personnel this coming fall. Now his running mate at left tackle, who is, runs on the left side of the offensive line for BYU, left side, strong side. Yes, I am quoting uh, our good friends, uh, the nominal movie, uh, Remember the Titans. Duh. It was on the tip of my tongue. I apologize. But Blake Freeland, Number three, he is OT3, number three offensive tackle in this list. Peter Skaronsky from Northwestern and Paris Johnson Jr. from North Ohio State are the only two in front of Blake Freeland. I'm not sure how many people out there in NFL draft circles know how little football Blake Freeland in terms of offensive line has played in his career. This was a kid, if you will recall, played quarterback, tight end, uh, defensive end, and never uh, played some special teams as well as a punter, et cetera, at Harriman High School. Never once suited up as an offensive lineman before getting to BYU. Midway through his freshman campaign, he starts against Boise State. And from there, it just, you could see the promise in Blake Freeland. He looks every bit the part of just that agile offensive tackle who you set at that left tackle position. And he's a starter for a decade plus in the NFL. It just looks like he is the next in a long line of great BYU offensive tackles. He's got all the frame, all of the ability, all of the, just the overall uh, athletic attribute you want. This is a kid who holds multiple state titles at the in the track and field realm and the field side of things. I think shot put, javelin. I think he won one. Maybe won one in discus. He's an absolute stud. The best part is at six foot eight, whatever he is at three hundred some odd pounds, he can still dunk a basketball with ease. This is a true athlete playing left tackle, and there's no reason to think that he cannot maintain this position. I'm of the opinion if Blake Freeland actually goes out there and maybe doesn't have the season that he thinks he is capable of having, he may decide to run it back at BYU and become maybe the top offensive tackle prospect in the 2024 NFL draft cycle. This is a kid who is still very, very young. I believe he was 17 when he enrolled at BYU, might have been barely 18, still very very young. He has not served a mission. So he's got time on his side in theory. But if you're number three on this list and you go out and have a pretty solid season, Blake Freeland needs to jump because if you're number three offensive tackle, that is first round territory. That's like the middle part of the first round. If you are as good as you are cracked up to be in apparently a guy like Mel Kuyper who's been in this NFL drafting for four decades now thinks you are. Blake Freeland has got some Tough decisions coming, and I know the BYU would like to have him manning that left side. Both of these guys, both Clark Barrington and Blake Freeland, manning the left side for BYU for at least another year. But 
very much looks like both of them could have some interesting decisions coming very, very quickly for them. Now, some other guys I figured that might make this list included Keenan Peely, Peyton Wilgar, I also that Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney might also be some candidates to make the top 10 list. With good seasons this year, they might find themselves moving on to this list. This is not a set list that is going to be uh, set and it's forgotten. It, it, this is something that Mel Kuyper updates from time to time. And if guys like that, if like a Puka Nakua goes out and have a, has a thousand yard season, he could find himself at the number 10 spot at wide receiver. Peyton Wilgar, Keenan Peely at the linebacker positions. It's a very talented linebacking core. Noah Sewell, many of you might recall from Orem High School. He is the top inside linebacker prospect from Oregon. Henry Tuu, Tuu from Alabama, formerly of Tennessee, a guy that BYU recruited many times during his career, uh, is number three on that list. There's a lot of great talent at linebacker, but a guy like Keenan Peely and Peyton Wilgar, I am of the opinion if they go out and have healthy years this year, both of them could find themselves in the NFL draft hearing their name called. I talked about this in the past on the podcast. I have talked with some NFL talent evaluators. They think the 2023 NFL draft class for BYU might be one of the richest in BYU football history, bar none. You can think back to some of those teams in the 80s, late 70s. Uh, you think of some of the teams in the 90s. This draft class for BYU in 2023 could be absolutely loaded. It could have, what, five, six, seven guys drafted if these guys exceed or show what they can do and NFL talent evaluators agree with them. This is an incredible uh, bumper crop of talent for BYU. The best part is they got another season to go out there and prove it this year in 2022. And if all of them show what they are capable of, that is going to yield a lot of success for BYU on the gridiron. And that should excite you as a BYU fan. All right, coming up here in just a moment, we will talk a little bit more about two of the great BYU football players. Both of them actually guys that I thought at one point might have chances to play in the NFL. One of them did make it. The other one did not. We'll talk about them in our top 50 player countdowns, as well as a note on BYU basketball. Some interesting things with look with regards to looking ahead to the big 12, all that and more in just a moment right here on locked on Cougars. All right, time to talk a little bit about our top 50 player countdown. Forgot to get to one of our players yesterday. We're going to talk about one of the top players I enjoyed covering during my time covering BYU uh, as a professional for the past decade. My time covering BYU pretty much coincides with BYU being an independent. Michael Elisa is one of the guys that I always enjoyed covering at BYU. Do his stats stand out as being absolutely legendary? No, absolutely not. But this is a guy who switched from defense to offense, back to defense and back to offense multiple times in his BYU career, playing wherever it was best for him and where he thought he had the best opportunity to succeed as a BYU Cougar. Alisa started his career way back in 2008 for BYU before embarking on a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He missed the final years of BYU playing in the Mountain West Conference, and when he returned from 2011 to 2014, he was a member of BYU's team in the early years of independence. For his career, he garnered a grand total of 811 yards rushing, seven touchdowns, also added 78 yards receiving and another touchdown through the air. And then on the defensive side of the football, during different stints playing for BYU at linebacker, etc. He garnered a grand total of 44 total tackles, 31 of those solo, one sack, three tackles for loss, two pass breakups, three forced fumbles, one interception, and three quarterback hits. I always love talking to Mike or Michael. It depends on uh, the day it feels like with him, what he likes to be called, but he is a great human being. I had a great chance to speak with him at a Northern Utah High School Player of the Week banquet at John Watson Chevrolet. This is going back probably four or five years. He was absolutely great then. This is a kid who has always been savvy with the media. He's now doing a bunch of different modeling things out there in the community. Many of you might have seen him in some ads. If you know Michael Aliso, you know exactly what he is like as a human being. A great dude. And and I cannot uh, believe I forgot to leave him off this list until now, but I'm actually glad I remembered him on this list. Six foot one, 228 pounds, a native of Laie, Hawaii, ultimately played a lot of his high school ball at Timview High School in Provo. But Michael Elisa, absolutely a guy we had to have on this list. Another guy who is an all-time legend for BYU, who we are talking about in terms of the all-timers outside of the independent era, is number 96 himself. Chad Lewis, the product of Orem High School, six foot six, 235 pounds, very much was a guy that BYU fans who were around in the 1990s, you will remember richly for his time playing alongside Atula Mealy. That tandem was absolutely legendary for BYU, especially in that 1996 Cotton Bowl team. For his career, Chad Lewis in four different seasons garnered 111 receptions, 1,376 yards receiving. 
10 touchdowns. And those numbers may just seem like, wow, that was that little. Chad, like I said, split a lot of time with a lot of other receivers and tight ends, most notably Adula Mealy during his time as a Cougar. But Chad's story did not end there. This is a guy who wanted to make it at the professional level, spent time with the St. Louis uh, Rams, who are now the Los Angeles Rams, before obviously landing with Andy Reid and the Philadelphia Eagles and going on to having a Pro Bowl caliber career. Just an absolutely insane story for Chad Lewis. I've got a little bit of a family connection to the Lewis family, and Chad is just the best human being out there. You will never hear anybody say a negative word about him and as i answered a question last week on this podcast i think chad who is now working as an associate athletic director of some sort in the byu athletic department i couldn't name it if you were to give me five guesses i apologize but i think that chad lewis should be the favorite to succeed tom homo as byu's athletic director when tom decides to hang it up i think chad's got the entire package the smarts the savvy the know-how the overall gregarious personality he looks every bit as the part as the next BYU uh, administrator running BYU athletics. I would love nothing more than to see Chad running BYU. And I think he'd do a bang up job doing that. And, We'll see how it shakes out with regards to that. But those are our two honorees today in the top 50 player countdown. We'll get to another one tomorrow as we round out the week here on the podcast. But before we go, I also wanted to pass along this. BYU Men's Basketball has opened a new role. They have posted a posting for a director of recruiting, a, a, excuse me, a recruiting coordinator for the BYU Men's Basketball Program. I think this is actually a very, very good sign. We heard a lot about BYU and the unprecedented money and being poured into the BYU football program. Well, they have not forgotten gotten about BYU basketball and these other programs. This is an indication, this job right here, that BYU understands they have got to invest at an unprecedented level. Yes, I'm using that term because it is unprecedented to make sure that BYU is set up for success going into the Big 12. Who might fill this role? I've got no clue. I know that uh, Jonathan Tavernari, a former BYU basketball player, thinks that Lamont Morgan would do an incredible job at that. I think Lamont would do a great job. If Lamont wants that type of position, wants to get into the game that way, it's not a bad way to do it. But there are a bevy of different options out there for BYU. The biggest thing for BYU with regards to their basketball recruiting, you got to work in concert with the BYU coaching staff. Mark Pope and his three assistants, you got to put together a coherent plan of what you want to do. How many guys will you be trying to track in the transfer portal every year? How many high school athletes will you go after? Will you chase JUCO guys, or is that a thing of the past? How will you go about developing these guys? How are you going to plan for inevitable guys entering the transfer portal? How will you go about replacing that talent? There are so many things here that a recruiting coordinator can do, and it's going to be absolutely critical that BYU has a person on staff who is capable of carrying that load. I absolutely love the fact that they have posted this job. I think it is going to be an absolute home run for whoever wants to get into the game that way, and it'll be a huge opportunity for some young coach or a new administrator, et cetera, to get into the game and begin uh, building their their, rep their reps as a college administrator. It's kind of a hybrid role in a way because you're administrator administrating in terms of the overall recruiting side of things for basketball. But at the same time, you have an, an incredible role with the current team as well. Cause I know that BYU football announced they have a director of player personnel with Justin Anderson in re with regards to also having a recruiting coordinator. Those two positions are going to go together, working together. This job essentially for BYU basketball is that those two roles combined into one. You have to look at the roster, manage who's going in, who's coming out. You have guys going on missions, all that stuff with regards to BYU basketball. I think this is an incredibly important job, and I'm glad BYU is hiring for it. And I think it speaks well to the investment level that BYU is putting into their various programs as they get ready to make that jump to the Big 12 in 2023. All right, that's going to do it for today's edition of the show. A huge thank you once again for joining us. By the way, this hat I'm wearing, this is the BYU baseball Nike hat. They had it on sale at the BYU store a few weeks back. It might have become my new favorite hat. It is absolutely incredibly comfortable. If you have a chance to snag one of these bad boys, it's actually a fitted hat, but it just it fits incredibly well. I'm a huge new era fan. I wear a lot of 5950s. This hat is maybe even more comfortable than that. It's absolutely incredible. So you have a chance to get a hat like this. If you have a chance to go on the BYU store and find it, grab one if you're if you're capable of getting one. It's absolutely incredible. All right. Enough of that. That's it for today's show. Please follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Search out Locked On Cougars. Leave us a rating and review if you're still watching this on YouTube. I'm going to point down. I'm actually, we're, we're switching our camera. So I'm just, gonna, I don't know. I'm just screwing this up. It's right there. 
pointing to that lower right corner. I man, I just made a butchery of this. Anybody listening to this in the audio format just missed all that hilarity. But you hit that button, subscribe to the show. Make sure you leave us a, a comment or two about each show, what you like in the comment section below it. Also, make sure you guys follow the show wherever you get your podcast. Leave us those ratings and reviews, as we already mentioned. And a huge thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Now go make our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast your second listen. Josh Neighbors is an Josh Neighbors does an incredible job making sure you guys are up to speed on everything with regards to the Big 12. Check it out wherever you get your podcast, just like this one. It's available everywhere for free. All right, that is going to do it for today's edition of the show. A huge thank you once again for checking us out. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for June 2nd, 2022, and we'll catch you guys soon.